Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to the show. This is the 51st episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday, the 12th of October, recorded on the 11th. My name is Julius de Campenaar, and as usual, I am your host for today's show. I love to hear from you. So if you watch the show on YouTube, please don't forget to like this video and share your thoughts, ideas, suggestions, etc. in the comment section. I'm always on the lookout for new ideas that I can cover in an upcoming episode of Sector Spotlight. So don't be shy. Your feedback and your questions are appreciated. Last week's Sector Spotlight was a rerun, as I was not able to record on Monday due to the passing away of my mother at 85 years old. Gladly it was not COVID related, but just old age. Nevertheless, it remains sad and it means that my brother and me need to take care of a lot of things. So I'm sure this week will provide us with a lot of new challenge in that department. But for now, we are going to look at markets through the RRG lens first. And after that, I am planning to go over the positions in the long short baskets and see how they are doing and whether we need to take some action. Let's start with the usual look back on what happened in asset classes and sectors. On the left hand side, the RRG showing the rotation for asset classes and on the right hand side, the RRG showing the rotation for sectors. Instead of the usual five day period, I have now loaded up a 10 day trail because we, we missed last week. So we're going to look at, um, at two weeks of performance. If we start on the left hand side, um, we can see that actually VNQ, real estate, and ITOT made very nice rotations uh, into the leading quadrant, um, picking up 6.8 and 6.2 respectively, which is very, very decent. A good performance also for DJP, the commodity index, commodity ETF, at 4.3%. Although it is still inside the lagging quadrant on that daily chart. And the same goes for GSG, which is showing a um, different rotation than DJP, but also ending up inside the lagging quadrant um, at 2.9%. We will have a look at the, these rotations uh, and put them into a longer term perspective later on. We move to high yield, high yield corporate bonds. They have been continuing to weaken and they have just entered the lagging quadrant. So underperforming uh, a relative downtrend versus VBINX, the Vanguard Balanced Index Fund, which is our benchmark for this RRG. And we have LQD, which is the investment grade corporate bonds, very clear negative rotation into the lagging quadrant. Also a relative downtrend versus uh, VBI and X. And that I was going to say almost, of course, also the same for government bonds. Um, a very clear negative rotation through weakening and now into the lagging quadrant. The US dollar, similar pattern, losing strength over the last two weeks, uh, losing 1.7% which is clearly below the gain of 3.5% for the benchmark, almost hitting the lagging quadrant. If we move to the right-hand side of the chart, where we have the sectors, then we can see a very strong performance for utilities. Bit of a, a weak, uh, not weak, weird rotation for this sector. Uh, rolling over and I'm picking up and now starting to roll back down again. Nevertheless, very strong performance over the last two weeks. We're going to see how that looks on a longer term chart later on. We have consumer discretionary XLY, which just moved into the lagging quadrant, curled up uh, from weakening and moved into leading and now just starting to lose a little bit of momentum again, but it's it's one of these sectors that has been very stable and continuing to rotate on the right hand side, indicating um, the strength of that trend. Of course, there is 
Technology, XLK, and you know, the last show that we did was titled um, October is Technology Month. And um, it, it seems to be following that seasonal pattern again, because we have, I need to change this, 3.1% for technology versus, um, uh, of course, I need to bring this to last Friday. So here is XLK. Well, it's in line with the S&P 500 at 5.5%, where, where we crossed over into the leading quadrant after a good stint. Um, so we're still doing quite well. We're on track with a good performance, not yet outperforming, but we still have two more weeks to go. So we're going to continue to monitor XLG from that uh, respect. XLF did pretty well and seems to be continuing pretty well um, this is up to last Friday just crossing into improving we're very close to the uh, to the benchmark and very close to crossing over into the leading quadrant we'll have to see how that works out in combination with the uh, with the weekly RRG and the longer term pattern and then we already discussed discretionary here is real estate um, Rotating on the on the right hand side, which is pretty strong um, inside the U.S. sector universe, we saw the sort of well, we saw the picking up of strength on on an asset allocation level for V and Q. If we look at XLRE, which is the sector compared to SPY, we see an improvement with a rotation going through weakening and now back into leading. Again, we're going to look at that at a longer term chart later on. Another sector that is outperforming the S&P 500 over the last 10 days is materials. We saw that weak rotation through the weakening quadrant. Uh, and now we, we are pushing into lagging, but we are doing that at, at a rising RS momentum. So we're very close to the 100 level on the RS ratio line and we're picking up on momentum. That's not necessarily a negative rotation. We went through that correction over the last 10 days. If we scroll back here, you see that negative rotation. And now we are, as of last Friday, into the lagging quadrant, but already picking up. So it's very interesting to see how this works out on the, uh, on the weekly RRG. Then we have industrials that are inside weakening, but already starting to pick up again. So we're going to see how that works out. This is going to be, this could be a potentially interesting sector with the short-term uh, image rolling up, curling up inside the uh, weakening quadrant. That's pretty often a pretty good sign. And we have technology. Um, went through a, a strong stint. Um, if we go, so this is, this is Friday, one, two, three, four, five. This is Friday a week ago. Very strong move for, uh, for technology clearly outperforming SPY in the previous week. And we are now one, two, three, four, five on par with the S&P 500. Um, so we're gonna continue to monitor technology going, in, going further into the month of October. Healthcare, ah, it, it, this, this tail is not very strong because it, it improved and it, as soon as, Healthcare rotated into the leading quadrant. It almost immediately um, rolled over downward and it's now hitting the weakening quadrant and getting fairly close to pushing into the lagging quadrant. Um, not, a got, not a lot of good news for, uh, for this sector from this perspective. Consumer staples, XLP underperforming uh, the S&P 500 at 4% and uh, a, a tail that is heading towards the lagging quadrant. Not very, not a very strong, not a very strong tail. And, uh, and because of the proximity of the 100 level on the RS ratio, uh, I'm gonna be very cautious with the staple sector from a daily uh, perspective. Tech, uh, communication services, XLC, went through improvement um, up to, this is the October 2nd. Um, so, so up till 
you know, Friday a week ago, things were looking pretty cool for communication services. And then one, two, three, four, five. So this is last week's performance. You, you we see communication services um, hooking back down into the lagging quadrant. This is on the daily RRG. So, uh, but still, um, although it's short term, it's not very promising for the sector as a whole. And then the last sector is energy. Um, it's way down on the table, meaning it has the, the weakest performance over this 10-day period from all sectors. Uh, it's picking up a little bit of relative strength inside the lagging quadrant, but look at, compare the position of XLE versus all the others. It's way to the left, which is very negative. Um, and this is just a little hiccup. Um, this sector is um, uh, still very disappointing. If we quickly move to looking at the longer term picture for both asset classes and sectors, I'm going to change my RRG here to weekly for the asset classes and I'm going to bring up my regular charts in combination with the RRG lines. I'm going to pick out a few interesting rotations and obviously on the uh, on the asset allocation RRG, that is definitely the comparison between stocks and bonds. So let's let's bring up ITOT, which is the um, total stock market core index, and and we see it's it's furthest to the right, which means that it is the strongest strongest asset class, losing a little bit of momentum over recent weeks, but nothing major yet. It's not even into the weekend quadrant yet. And if you look at uh, government bonds, then you see pretty much the opposite as usual, uh, well into the lagging quadrant and picking up a little bit of momentum uh, inside the lagging quadrant. If we look at the um, charts that come with those RRG tails, and let's start with the, uh, the tail on government bonds and look at that chart. We see that that those are um, those bonds are really under pressure. We we try to break above that horizontal level, uh, just above well, it's probably twenty eight thirty something. Uh, that didn't work out. We're now moving our way lower, and I'm really watching this level, which is here. That is um, twenty seven forty five as a very important support level. If if Golf breaks below that level, uh, I think that it could go a lot lower and it will almost certainly push this relative strength line versus VBNX below its support level, which would be negative news from a relative point of view for bonds. Now, how would that work out for, and you, and you can see that this, this is the lowest level that we've seen in, in, in two, three years. If we bring up the chart of SPY, let's bring, let's bring in SPY because everybody's looking at SPY, and we can see, um, as I said, the opposite. And you can see this is, the, this is the recent rollover of SPY and ITOT. They pretty much have the same uh, shape of the tail. And we can see that after breaking to new highs, SPY fell back didn't really respect this old high as support, but it did respect the level around, what was it, 322. I and a lot of other commentators wrote about that 320, 322 area a lot of times, and, and you can see that it now came back. So we didn't do it, we didn't, the, the, the 338, 340 area didn't really catch the, catch the decline, but the 322, the 320 area did. Where it didn't work out is on the relative strength. We didn't push to new highs as we did in price. We did not do that on the relative strength chart. And you see that we're losing a little bit of momentum uh, on this relative strength trend and, and RS ratio is moving over. So that could provide us with a little bit of short-term weakness. But if I look at the, the combination of stocks versus bonds and those tails here on, on the RRG, with stocks far to the right and golf bonds far to the left. And this, these charts that we're seeing here, I think that I'm gonna watch these, these relative strength levels because if stocks, if SPY breaks to new relative highs and if 
engulfed, if bonds break to new relative lows, I think that could actually cause a, an explosive move in favor of stocks. I have no idea what the narrative would be for that. But if that happens, just focusing on the charts, bonds will be breaking to multi-year relative lows and stocks will be breaking to multi-year relative highs. That is not a bad thing. And if you break out of a base like this, it's almost a three-year base, that usually causes a a strong move, a strong rally. So I'm going to watch these levels, resistance on SPY and, and support on the relative line for GOFT like a hawk. And when that happens, I think that we're in for a really big move in favor of stocks over bonds, even more than, we're all, than we already are. Let's quickly move on to, um, to see what's happening in sectors. We're loading up the weekly chart for US sectors here. And let's have a look at some interesting tails. Um, if I take the, here's, we're looking at five week tails and then all of a sudden our beloved technology sector pops up at the, um, at the, top, of the, uh, at the top of the table with 9.8%. Um, very short tail, inside weakening, very high RS ratio reading, uh, which makes this still a very strong sector. Let's quickly bring up the sector chart and we will see that we have this very nice high low rotation. We're working our way back higher. The, uh, the relative line is still doing very well. Here we see that little rolling over of RS ratio. That's this, this little move moving from right to left. That's, that's this one here. And we see a little loss of momentum, but nothing super major. So technology remains one of the strongest sectors uh, for the time being, and it's still fulfilling its promise of being a good month in October from a seasonality point of view. Um, utilities uh, showing up at the top of the range. That's very interesting. And let's see how that works out on the chart. Uh, the reason for this jump is clearly that break out of that triangle formation. Now, if we look a little bit deeper, a little bit further under the hood, rather than looking at this tail, we see that that is caused by a rally below the breakout, below a, a major support level. So despite the fact that utilities is showing a very strong performance over the last five weeks, that it is inside the improving quadrant, it's breaking out of this triangle formation. I am still a little bit reluctant because we're pushing against old support, now resistance on the relative strength line versus SPY. If we go, I'm with this tail as soon as the relative line breaks back into that range. If that happens, that will be a very strong sign for utilities. But for the time being, um, I'm going to hold back on utilities because I really need to see this relative line push back into the um, trading range of that relative strength line. Consumer discretionary, equally strong as technology, because what we see here is, again, a very short tail um, far away to the right. It's still even inside the leading quadrant. And if we look at the chart, we see that it's pushing to new highs. Very strong, no problem. Look at the, is it there? there is a rhythm of higher highs and higher lows, but they're so short, that's, that's causing this very short tail with a very gradually rising RS ratio and an almost flat momentum, but it is still rising and it's still good. Um, so discretionary remains a very strong sector. Um, those are the only, one, the only three sectors that have been outperforming or um, SPY over the last 10 weeks. They are clearly uh, very good sectors. Now, industrials is inside leading, but already starting to roll over. So if we bring that up on a chart, then we see a gradually rising sector 
based on price, not being able to push above its highs yet. And this, this relative strength line is sort of hesitating. It's inside this sort of consolidation pattern and we really need a break higher from that consolidation um, to make this a really interesting sector. It's not a bad sector, but it's not super strong and I don't like the fact that it's rolling over. Um, XLE remains far into the um, lower left corner inside lagging. Um, I, I wonder whether that sector will ever get back to the right hand side. If we continue, you see that continuation down. So this is actually the easiest call in US sectors at the moment. Just stay away from energy. It's not doing anything good right now. Um, staples inside the improving quadrant. And if we bring that to the chart here, uh, this is doing pretty well. We're, we're hovering above support and we're, we just push, you know, this, this high-low rotation, just like SPY, respected uh, a, a previous support level and it's now challenging new all-time highs. So that is not a bad thing. So unlike utilities, I'm more in favor of staples, which is what RRG is all about. It's further to the right than utilities, so staples is better than utilities. If you combine that with the picture on the chart, then um, I can see more performance for staples going forward. Let's quickly round it off with um, healthcare, because that's a sector that everybody is looking at right now. Insight lagging, improving a little bit, but we're not there yet. And it wasn't very strong on the daily chart either. And if we bring the chart for XLV here, we can see that it's pushing to new all-time highs, but the momentum, momentum the, the, the speed at which it's happening is not fast enough to outperform, um, the, outperform the market, outperform SPY, and, and push it into the top right quadrant of the RRG. So it's not a bad sector at all. It's simply that there are, at the moment, better sectors inside the S&P 500. Than, um, than the healthcare sector. And you can see that here, it's, um, it, it broke this rising trend line. We're now hovering above this support line. We need to see, uh, and see and wait what happens around this level in, in the coming week. I'm gonna leave it at this for uh, the sector overview. And um, we're going to a quick 30 second break right now. And after that, we'll be looking at what's happening in our long short baskets. Now, welcome back. Um, I think I spoke too long. I, we have about five minutes, a good five minutes left to go over the long short positions that we have in our basket and we've been maintaining those. Let me first show you what we there have. Um, on the long side, we have CTSH, FCX, IVE, XLB and SEE. And on the short side, we have XLE, EWH, IVW, NI, and PayPal, PYPL. Now, in terms of performance, we're continuing to do pretty good with uh, a new high, just over 12%, almost 13% since we started to do this uh, back in March, it was. So pretty happy with that. Um, as I said, we don't have enough time to go over all these positions and review them. So I have decided that we need to focus on the one replacement that I think is necessary. And it is on the short side. On the short side, we have EWH, the MCI Hong Kong ETF, the iShares MCI Hong Kong. Um, we have it as a short in our baskets, and as you can see, it is moving from lagging into 
uh, improving and, and closing in on, on, on the 100 level on the RS ratio scale. If we bring in the chart here, then we can see that there is like a little nice uptrend underway. It's not super strong, but it's not weak either. And we're hovering above this relative support level. Now, if this breaks again and the tail rolls over, then of course it, it, it remains a good short. But for the time being, I think that the, um, the odds for EWH Hong Kong to rise and potentially break above this resistance, given the turning up of the RRG lines, um, warrants a removal of AWH from the position. So we're going to we're going to delete um, a short the short position. Going to cover the short position in EWH, and that leaves us with an open spot. And I'm looking to uh, to replace it with a stock from the communication services sector. Communication services is on the RRG itself for the sector itself is inside weakening and, and moving further to uh, to lagging. Not necessarily a bad sector, but when it rolls over, then you know the damage could be serious in that sector. So um, as sort of a hedge or you know whatever that you want to call it, I wanted to see if there were any uh, stocks inside the communication services sector that could help us with a good uh, potential short position. And I have narrowed it down to actually three of those. And they are DISH, EA, and TTWO. I can't go over all these. Well, these are these are the the tails on on the daily rotation and if we switch that to weekly then we get these tails and you can see that dish ea are already in lagging and pushing further into it and ttwo is inside weakening and quickly moving towards the lagging quadrant now what does that mean in terms of the charts ttwo is in a nice uptrend, but it's losing relative strength and rolling over, as you can see here with the RRG lines. Um, that is, it, it's not really a good short yet. If you look at EA, we have a similar image. Um, that uptrend, it's, it's breaking below support on the relative strength chart and both RRG lines are pushing below 100. That's positioning EA well into the lagging quadrant. And if we look at DISH, then we see similar well positions in, into the lagging quadrant, but here also, I don't really like the price chart. It looks as if I have a double top completed and we're now on the way down. And this could go all the way down to this low here around 17 and a half that we saw at the beginning of the year, around February, March. So out of these three, I picked um, DISH to replace EWH as a short position in our basket. I, I do not have enough time to uh, go over all these positions anymore. That's a good subject for a new blog article. And um, I'm sorry, but this wraps up Sector Spotlight for this week. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern on Stock Charts Television. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and put any comments or remarks that you will have in the comments below and I will definitely respond to them. Maybe not necessarily in the next hour or an hour after you posted it, but I'll do my best to respond to everybody. Thank you very much and I hope to see you again next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.